Blender is one of the most comprehensive 3D modeling, design, animation, and rigging softwares out there. On top of all that, it's free to use by beginners like me, experts, and everybody else in between. However, being one of the most comprehensive 3D softwares out there brings a small caveat. When you first drop into Blender, there's nothing that really tells you what to do. That's the main problem in Blender, and there's no way to properly learn how to use the software without looking up tutorials, figuring it out on your own, and by figuring it out on your own, I mean just looking at that, looking at that dreaded cube for 30 minutes and then closing the entire program. Or you can do what I did and actually read the manual. Yes, Blender actually has a manual. No, I didn't actually read it, I lied. I never read the manual. Throughout my 50 plus hours in Blender in the past month, I've done everything that you could possibly do in the app. That means animation, sculpting, and a little bit of rigging myself. But one of the funniest assignments I've given myself thus far was making memes. And today I'm gonna show you how I set up, lit, and shot the scene that's on the screen now. But before we get into all that, I'd like to welcome you to a new series aptly titled The Blender Discourse Course, an extended mini series that serves to document the various shenanigans and assignments that I have encountered throughout my time relearning Blender because I tried to learn it before and I completely forgot everything that I was trying to do. So yeah. Consistency is key here. With that out of the way, if you like the video, hit that like button right next to the subscribe button and hit the subscribe button since you're already down there looking at it. And since you're already down there, once again, leave a comment and tell me some of your favorite parts about Blender if you actually are using Blender. Or on top of that, let me know what you wanna see in this series going forward. I already have a couple of things that I wanna do in mind, but interaction will definitely help decide what goes next in this series. First thing that I had to do in order to get this entire environment set up was to get all of my models. Fortunately for me, I had been working with this Ahsoka model for roughly about two months now. Using this particular Ahsoka model with these types of bones and the rig overall, made it a lot easier for me to actually make stuff uh, at the beginning of this entire little journey of various shenanigans that I call this little blender course. And I was very happy with it. The models that I'm using as well as the environment were created by a nice fellow named Eris. I loved all of the styles that they actually produced throughout the various things that I downloaded from them. And their Ahsoka model is probably one of my favorites. They actually were able to make the ghost ship background as well that I'm using now. And you'll see a lot more of that throughout this video, but I was just like, yeah, I gotta use that. That's perfect. But the hardest part here, as you can see, we're getting those hips together. Those hips were very difficult because I completely forgot which part of the entire body I needed to actually use. Well, I needed to move first. And that's why the first shenanigan here was more or less me figuring out how the skeleton worked for this entire model. I loved how the rig was put together and how the bones of this entire rig actually came together. The face was probably the easiest thing to actually work on despite me not being very good with facial expressions. I found myself basically making this exact face throughout the entire time I was making this thing because I was just like, yeah, this is, this is gonna work right here. This is gonna be perfect. And then my face got stuck and I was like, oh, that's terrible, but it's okay. Once I actually got the spine in the right angle as well as the back, uh, everything else was more or less falling in line. I actually got Bo-Katan's pose done first and well, her head is back, oh, there it is. Her pose was a lot easier to work with, mainly because all I had to do was just turn on that X-axis mirror and most of the job was halfway done anyway by the time I got halfway done, which I love. X-axis mirror is probably one of the clutchest things that I've learned how to use in Blender. It was extremely irritating when I first learned how to do it. Funny enough, I actually learned how to use the X-axis mirror while I was working on another Ahsoka piece that you'll very much see later on that I'm not even gonna try to spoil it for you. You'll see in the donut video. Just be on the lookout for the donut video. X-axis mirror for the hands was probably the most important thing, or at least it probably is the most important thing that you can use throughout making poses and using models in Blender. I think, I save what 20 minutes of actual time just by clicking that button and then making sure that both hands were fixed in the right position and then you can actually see the meme that I'm working off of too. It was very hard to actually get that anatomy working the way I needed to but um, by the time I was done with it I was very satisfied with how it ended up being. It was still very weird 
to figure out how to get certain things to not clip which is one of the biggest things that you need to work on or at least you need to be aware of when you do start using stuff and making stuff in blender clipping is your best friend but also it's not your best friend at the same time another shenanigan that i encountered here was trying to figure out how to select multiple things at the same time even though some of them weren't actually uh, tangentially connected mainly ahsoka's body as well as bo katan's pistol, uh, blasters i had to figure out how to make sure all of those were selected and then once i got it i was like yeah great all right pretty good and then after all that once i got her down bo katan was a lot easier to work with i just had to make sure her face was uh posed in the right way make sure that nice facial expression of um what is it it's a smirky snarky entry i think that's the facial expression i made for her right after that we added our lights i think overall i had about seven lights going that actually needed to be going about three of them i ended up turning off just because i didn't need them and also you wouldn't be able to see them in the picture anyway but i had a lot of those going and the lights that i ended up using well the color of the lights that i ended up using made the entire thing look a little different than what i was expecting so i ended up going back later and tweaking the light colors but right now i needed to make sure that the angle that i was going to have set up for bokatan behind her was actually filled up and not just a empty space environment which in this case actually makes sense because it is star wars related so you could have a space environment in your background but that's not what we were trying to do so i copied the entire map environment map I'll say environment and just duplicated a couple things. Fortunately enough, Eris was kind enough to not have everything completely stuck together in Blender, which helped me because I was able to duplicate a couple of things and delete a couple of things just like I'm doing right now. And I was just able to copy and paste over. And now I was able to fill in that background. So once you see bo actual picture, you'll see her, some lights and a background. I had to make sure the background was properly separated that's the photographer in me i had to make sure the background was properly separated with enough light and shadow just to make sure uh the focus was on her i had to be careful with it but you know i think it ended up working the way it did or at least properly not too sure we're gonna get more into camera animations in a later episode but uh, the camera itself probably the most important thing that you need to learn how to use because trust me it was the first thing that I actually put on my canvas canvas it was the first thing that I put in my blender files other than that dreaded cube we're gonna talk about that cube later exporting everything now most of this came out very well or at least to me and just because I edit photos I, I knew a couple of ways that I could tweak some of these photos, but because I was exporting them as PNGs, I wasn't too hard on myself in regards to actually uh, getting those photos edited because I ended up liking how they came out overall, especially the Bo-Katan picture. So at the end of the day, I was very satisfied with it. Like I said, there were a lot of flaws and imperfections that I saw, but uh, this is something that I could pass off. I was very happy with it. So with all that being said, thanks for joining me on the first episode of what is hopefully a uh, extended mini series, like I said I was going to do, on all of my various shenanigans and Blender and all the cool stuff that I've learned so far. And I'm just taking you on that journey. So if you enjoyed this little video, please leave a like, drop a subscribe, and drop a comment in the comment section down below just to tell me some things that you want to see in the future because I might just put it in this series. I have like four things that I want to do, but I just want to do more because I'm having fun and one of my goals for this year was to learn Blender a little bit more. So let me know. And with all that being said, I will catch you all later and make sure you blend something nice.